Hello and welcome to the answer series natural sciences videos based on our study guides. In this video we will look at the building blocks of matter, atoms and elements and briefly revise the layout and content of the periodic table of elements. Everything around us consists of matter. A pencil, the water we drink, the air we breathe and our bodies are all made of matter. Matter is anything that takes up space, has a mass and is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Atoms are the smallest building blocks of matter. They're extremely small and only visible using very powerful microscopes. Elements are made up of many of the same kind of atoms. For example, if we took a ring made of gold and we zoomed in to its microscopic or atomic structure, we would see that it is made up entirely of the element gold of which the chemical symbol is Au. One golden circle in this diagram represents a single golden atom. Note that no other atoms are present and all we see are rows upon rows of the same gold atoms. So elements, like gold, consist of thousands of atoms of the same kind. So atoms make up everything. And that's a silly little joke to remember this. Why should you never trust an atom? Because they make up everything. There are 118 known elements in total and they're all listed on the periodic table of elements. All the atoms of an element are identical but they differ from the atoms of other elements. Notice the difference in the atoms of these three elements, gold, carbon and helium. The element gold consists of only gold atoms. The element carbon consists of only carbon atoms and the element helium consists of only helium atoms. So you can see that each element consists of its own unique atoms, in other words all the gold atoms are the same, but they're different to the carbon atoms and the helium atoms. The arrangement of the atoms in these elements is something that we will discuss in a later video, so don't worry too much about that. For now only focus on understanding that each element has its own unique atoms. And this property makes elements pure substances because they only contain one kind of atom and they cannot be broken down into other substances or other elements by chemical reactions. There's physically nothing else in them to break them into. This means that if we take our gold ring and we break it into little pieces, each piece would still only contain gold atoms. And even if I were to melt these gold pieces, I would simply have liquid gold made up of gold atoms only. At no point during the breaking down of this gold do I suddenly have other atoms or substances that appear. Now let's turn our attention to the periodic table of elements and briefly revise what you learned in the previous grade. The elements on the periodic table are arranged in order of their atomic numbers from lowest to highest. Each element is represented by a block which contains the elements atomic number, symbol, name and average atomic mass. Atomic numbers are explained in more detail in a later video. For example, the sixth element on the periodic table is carbon. Its atomic number is therefore 6. Its symbol is an uppercase letter C and its average atomic mass is given as 12. The 29th element on the periodic table is copper. Its atomic number is therefore 29. Its symbol is an uppercase letter C followed by a lowercase letter u, and its average atomic mass is given as 63,5. The symbol of an element is usually made up of the first letter of its name in an uppercase or capital, followed by a second lowercase or smaller letter if necessary. For example, carbon has a capital C, and hydrogen is a capital H. CA represents calcium, and HE represents helium. Some chemical symbols are a bit more difficult to understand because their names may come from Latin names. For example, the Na in the symbol of sodium comes from the Latin name for sodium, which is natrium. Elements are arranged in horizontal rows called periods from 1 to 7. Elements are also arranged in vertical columns called groups from 1 to 18. The arrangement of the elements in rows and columns can also tell a scientist what properties the element is expected to have 
because the elements have been arranged and grouped on the periodic table according to similar properties. For example, whether they are metals, semi-metals or non-metals. Starting at boron, you draw a zigzag line in a step-like manner down to the furthest corner of period 7. On the left-hand side of this line will be the metallic elements. Metals tend to be shiny, malleable, which means they can be bent easily, and usually they're solids at room temperature that can conduct electricity and heat fairly well. On the right-hand side of this dividing line are all of your non-metallic elements. Non-metals are usually dull, brittle, and they may be solids or gases at room temperature, and they're also poor conductors of electricity and heat. Some metals are not quite metals, but they're not quite non-metals either. So they just don't fit into either category, and we call these semi-metals or metalloids, and they tend to be grouped around our dividing line and have a combination of properties that are both metallic and non-metallic. Now you'll always receive a periodic table in exams, so you don't have to worry about memorizing its layout or all of its content, but some of these characteristics, abbreviations and element names may not be given. So here's a typical example of a periodic table you can expect in an exam. Notice that the group numbers are given, some are given as Roman numerals too. No element names appear with the chemical symbols, so you need to learn those names. And the position of the metals, semi-metals and non-metals is not indicated. But you do have a key that will always be provided so that you know which numbers within each element block indicate what. Key terminology for this video includes atom, element, periodic table, metals, non-metals and semi-metals. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.